now let's consider the power spectral density. So the uh, previous video, we defined a method of finding the power of a signal G that uh, continues to oscillate for an infinite amount of time, and we defined it using uh, the energy signal concept. Now the energy signal would be equal to, the energy of this truncated signal would be equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity of the truncated power signal. And the truncated power signal, right, we've cut it off so that we now have a, a big, big portion of this from t half to infinity, right, where it's equal to zero. And so this is going to give us a finite value. So we've made a truncated power signal. We defined a way to get its energy. And when we've defined the way to get the energy, uh, we can then use Parseval's theorem. And you can see the previous video, which I'll uh, link here. And using that Parseval's theorem, we can relate this either from the time domain or the frequency domain to find the energy of that truncated signal. So therefore, we can also, in the frequency domain, we can define this power of G using the frequency domain components of its truncated signal. So we can use the truncated components to define the power in the frequency domain. All right, so as the period increases, so in this limit, right, we want this t to go to infinity. So as we increase this uh, to minus infinity, infinity, we have the, the non-zero duration of this truncated signal increases. So this right now it's zero, but as this continues, right, as our, trunk, our period gets bigger and bigger, right, we're going to have a change in the non-zero duration, right? So this signal is going to get larger and larger. Therefore, this energy is also going to increase because we're integrating from a larger and larger place. So as this t gets uh, larger and approaches infinity, the energy in the truncated signal is also going to increase in proportion. Therefore, via the Parseval theorem, we also know that the energy that is defined in the frequency domain, which we can go back and forth using the Parseval theorem, that's also going to increase by changing the period. So therefore, as the period approaches infinity, so as the period in which this is this truncated signal is being created, as that approaches infinity, the frequency domain uh, energy spectral density is also going to approach infinity. This integral is going to get larger and larger. So as the truncated signal gets bigger, the energy gets bigger. However, what we also know is that this part, right, so this energy, of the truncated signal is getting larger at the same rate that this, which is in the denominator, right? This whole thing is divided by t. So this is getting larger at the same rate that the period is getting larger. Because of this, we know that the power is going to approach a non-infinite number. So you will get a finite value for this power signal. Therefore, we can exchange the order of the limit and the integral. So we have this limit and the integral, and because they are converging uh, at the same uh, rate, we know that we can actually exchange the order. And then the math behind this is maybe a little bit complicated. You may need to break out a different math textbook, but for this series of videos, just uh, take my word for it. Now, if you do that, change the order of the limit and the integration, we now have the uh, limit on the inside. And so we have the limit of this uh, truncated signal in the frequency domain divided by the period. And that whole limit is being integrated in the frequency domain. <clears throat> and so we've taken the definition of this power signal from what we have on the left to what we have on the right. And we can come up with this uh, power spectral density definition. And so this power spectral density is related to the energy spectral density. So right, this looks like our energy spectral density. And we've been able to apply our knowledge of the energy spectral density to power by making this truncated signal and making this truncated signal get larger and larger so that the energy signal continues to approach the power signal until at some point at infinity, it is a power signal. And therefore, using this limit, we can define the power spectral density. And we did it by building up using our knowledge of our energy signals. And so uh, we can write this power, um, the, uh, we can continue this and write that the power of a signal 
is equal to this the integration of the power spectral density, right? So this is the PSD, the power signal density, and we can integrate the power signal density from minus infinity to infinity to get the power of a signal. And this is equivalent to saying two times the integral from one to infinity. So it will have the um, that symmetry across the y-axis and you can see that this is a similar result that we obtained for the energy signal density.